We've been waiting for this night for some time. Yes. Oh yeah, me too. Oh yeah, uh, months, months and months, you know, for yeah. you guys to come through. Uh, the album, uh, Construct, has been out what, a year now? Almost, yeah. Almost a year, like last, last January. Right? Yeah. So yeah, or a little over a year. Last time. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I don't remember when it was released. Yeah, I know you lose track of time. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like we've been on the road ever since pretty much, so it's, it's weird. Right? I found it really interesting that with this album, I mean, total breath of fresh air cool. uh, listening to it. And you guys approach it in a very different way than yeah. that of your previous albums. Um, and you found a formula that really, really works. Um, yeah. Uh, in what ways did you approach this differently? <laughs> I mean, just so people know. and. Yeah. Is it something you plan on continuing with? Because I think you guys struck gold with this one. Yeah, I, I, um, we just decided not to kind of do it the normal way that we, we've been doing it for 20 odd years, you know? Where we sit around, all of us, and we just bounce ideas off each other. And as much fun as that is, and as much creative as that is, sometimes nothing comes out of it. Especially this, this time around, we were not sure where to go, like musically. We didn't really know how to, how to do it. So we figured, like, let's screw this democracy for a while and just have a few guys do it. So Martin and, uh, and Niklas and Anders started in our studio and just sat there and wow. assembled material and kind of played it and made tiny, small demos and stuff like that of just, you know, skeletal songs and, and ideas. Just to see cool. like what direction to go in and what to do, and uh, eventually things felt good and started happening and started to sound good, and we were like, right, this actually works. I mean, it was just an experiment and a, a kind of some kind of uh, emergency plan in a way because we felt we were kind of stuck in, in the way we were working before, but now all of a sudden, like, it opened up a lot of new possibilities, uh, and it opened up new ways of experimenting and, and trying new things out in the studio because normally what we do we finish the song in our rehearsal room and just play it two thousand times and the studio record it it's done mm -hmm. whereas now we could we write stuff in the studio where we were recording it and try different kind of vocal stuff and different verses different courses all that stuff and that's cool we've never really done that before but it it, it turned out to be a fantastic way of working so we're really dying to kind of Finish up this old touring madness and then go back and do that again. Right, right, yeah. Well, it's truly wondrous, man. I'm really digging the, the theme vocals coming back with cool. the present on the, some of the earlier yeah. material and hearing that again and really perfected, I think, this time. Cool. Um, yeah, man, it was definitely you know, one, one aspect that was so great about being in, in the studio for such a long time. We should just try, try it out, see if that works. If it doesn't, you know, move on and I go home and rewrite the part and, and um, it, it just it made us be more kind of objective about our own music instead of where where you sit around and write and you're in the rehearsal room playing just listening to your own instrument or just focusing on your own part now you can sit back and actually listen to music. That's right. cool. Absolutely. That's very cool. Absolutely. Now do you feel like this has breathed new life into the band, this new way yeah. of recording? And, and with that in mind, was there a time where maybe... Go ahead. Middle, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Go ahead. Was there a time where the future of the band maybe looked a little bleak? I mean, well, I, I don't know, not to say it's run out of ideas. Just, yeah, I guess we were just in a, in a bad place, you know, on our own personal levels and just... Because we couldn't agree on, on what to do, you know. And so it's just frustrating. We knew, of course, we had it in us. We can do it. We just don't know how. You know. Right. So uh, we we needed like a new method. Right. So uh, previous articles, you said less arguing on this one. You know, a little bit more. Yeah. Everybody bringing it in and, yeah. and focus. So, and, right. Well, it's a good idea. It's a bad idea. <laughs> and you, you are getting ready to. Do it again. You can use the same formula and try and see what you can I, do. I think so. Because yeah, so. <laughs> we definitely felt so good after we finished this one that it's like, oh, this, is, this is the way it works. This is so much easier, so much better, so much more uh, interesting. <laughs> now, I've always felt that uh, Dark Tranquility uh, puts a lot more thought into uh, their content, especially lyrics. Uh, 
not just musically, but it's very different. Um, you kind of challenge the listener intellectually, I think. Well, <laughs> At least you try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's just not only about that. It's just it's about challenging, our, challenging ourselves as well and kind of making sure that every song has some kind of emotional weight to it, you know. Um, both music and lyrics, it just has to mean something, it has to feel, you have to feel something, you know. And that's something that we always look for when we write. You know, just to, to, be there, it has to feel something. No, no, make you, no, 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 no. And the music has to want to yeah, make me want to sing. Oh, yeah, the weather. Dude, the the words, sun the is great. To kind of inspire me to scream, you know, and get them out of my system. <laughs> and of course, like, you know, time moves on. Like, there are new things that you get frustrated by and angry at and, uh, and sad about, and so I can always find something new to write. Things my playlist. It was a lot of things happening in my life. I changed the way I view things and relationships and people, and I really oh. had to kind of okay. start fresh and begin a new way of you thinking. Know. <laughs> 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 Wild track now. It was horrible, but writing the songs made it feel better. And so I kind of approached what I was going through from a kind of like a scientific standpoint or a skeptical standpoint and uh, I was able to kind of make more sense out of it to better. It seems to be very introspective and throughout the rest. Yeah, I guess. Like it, you know, it's, it's the stuff that keeps you awake at night, you know, that forces you, like, keeps you, keeps you up all night and uh, makes you feel horrible that I, Right. Now, how do you feel that um, the band as a whole, and you know the type of band that you are the music that you play, and the type of lyrics that you do write, having that really emotionally charged uh, attribute, how do you feel that it fares with other bands that you, I guess you consider your peers? Uh, in contrast, you know, how do you feel that you stand with them? I don't really think about that. You know, it's like. <laughs> For me, this is what we do, this is what I do, and, and that's it. Like, of course, I mean, in the beginning, when we started the band, like, we really had this idea that, you know, musically, literally, we should be different. We have to be original. We have to do what no one else is doing, or we take aspects from one genre that is not necessarily associated with metal or music to our music. And we use melodies that perhaps are unconventional and and I think I can get into all kinds of music, you know, but the stuff that I really gravitate towards is, is music that, that have the same kind of impact as our music has. Like something that means something, it's passionate, and has some, some kind of way. I mean, the reason I bring it up because I, I look at a lot of bands have, I mean, and, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's that a lot of the bands that are considered your peers tend to be not, uh, to, at least in my perspective, um, you have bands like Mata Mars who write about Vikings and you have, you know, uh, bands that are writing more melancholic type, you know, things. Um, and, uh, you know, or like Anthem, like Rebellion, you know, Rise of Love, you know, you know. Those type of I love those guys, but you guys yeah. tend to be a little bit more. I mean, even right down to the artwork, the logo, the name, almost has like a, a modern scope of things and a, and a future scope of things to me. Yeah, I guess like Nicholas does all the artwork and all that kind of thing. Like for him, it's it's really important to always think ahead and, and, and kind of refresh because I I think that he gets tired of himself and what he does all the time, so he has to change things. He's like, I don't want to do the same old thing. And it's the same old music. It has to kind of constantly move forward and be something new every time. Otherwise, what's the point? You can't go around repeating the cycle. The death of creativity. 
I agree. Totally agree. Now I want to dive just a little bit deeper into the lyrical content since you are the lyric man here and reading what your views on things are. Um, the album construct, uh, if I'm understanding it right, is dealing with issues that ultimately put a bluntly been pissing you off for some time. Um, and you want people to be able to think for themselves and not just go with the flow of culture or tradition or what they've been bred to believe. Yeah. That seems like where you're coming from with that. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I've been um, really getting into this kind of skeptical movement where uh -huh. you try to figure out just why do you think the way that you think? Why do you believe the way in what you believe? Just you know, getting down to the science of things and what really is true, and, and the fact that you know our memories are not reliable. You know, it's not 100%. It's just everything is um, passes through all your filters and it becomes something else. You know, but fine. I, I, I like an experience. You know, and the experience is your own, but it doesn't mean that it's the truth. <laughs> How you perceive things and how you see things are uh, so different for uh, it's so different for everybody, you know. And, um, like so, I said, would you one. say that what's true for one person is not necessarily true for another person? Yeah. yeah, in many ways. And I think, and of course, faith is always something that I, I keep coming back to in the last couple of albums. That something that I just don't really understand and. Uh, I'm kind of scared of the fact that people seem to kind of abandon fact and reality and, and kind of surrender to this fear of, yeah. of the unknown, you know, and, and resort to faith instead of to Do you believe that there are any, I guess, in certain, certain truths, there's truths and then there's truth. Do you believe in the universal truths? I like to, yeah. You know, that's just what's here is here. That's, that's it. Of course, you can pretend to know everything that's going on around the world and, you know, in science and in space and nature or whatever, but at least we try, you know, and we yeah. should kind of acknowledge the fact that we don't know anything. That's fine. I had a friend recently say to me that to when you use the word believe, that's basically saying that you pretend. You know, and, and I, I kind of disagree with him on a number of different things. I understand where he's coming from, but I think. You know, it can be used in that way, but, but it's not always. Um, so when I use the word believe, to take it in its, you know, yeah, it's, most people like, think it's what it's, I hope, you know. <laughs> um, how is it that, I mean, or maybe you do or don't, but from what I'm understanding, you want people to look at things for as they are, and, you, and see them for... I'm, I'm not, not saying that people should, I'm just, that's my take up right. things. And but I'm saying that if this person says, like I see it as this, and you say it, I see it as that, which one's right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I would provide the idea to be holding on and insist. Yeah. But as long as you, you realize that this is what I see, and you see something else, that's fine. I'm just, okay. I'm just curious, you know, because some people seem to think that they have They'll say, well, this is truth, and it's like, what makes you an authority on truth? Because you're just another person like me who's able to make mistakes, right? We can't really trust ourselves to, that, we, that we actually know anything. We, we think believe that, we know something. That's the biggest thing. Right. So, but I, I, I do agree with challenging people to at least be able to know what they believe. Right? You know, and be able to back it up. I don't... You know, anybody that says, I believe this because I was raised that way, or because that's the culture, you know, we had this discussion on the way down here about different cultures, like if, you know, in Japan you use chopsticks and here we use forks, some people sit on the floor and some people sit at the table, you know, um, there's different types of food and, and the, the culture clash there, it doesn't mean either one is right or wrong, it's just different. Just trying to get a perspective on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It seems, uh, it might be a minor concern. Um, and this is going back towards, you know, not the, you know, not the intellectual side of the Mr. Billy, but the, the, the music side of it. Um, and the production. I, I, I've been having arguments with different musicians, you know, for months now. Um, there are those that would say that today's production standards have killed me. 
you know, the whole the whole digital thing. Being in a, in a, a band who utilizes much of what modern you know technology has to offer, what do you think about? It? I mean, some people say the drums sound fake, you know. I mean, you know, people from that old school thought, you know, school of thought, you know, not necessarily that it doesn't have to be digital, but the, the overproduction. I mean, Metallica got slammed for, you know, the distortion and the guitars and, the, oh, yeah. you know, and then the guitar hero yeah. game that was a few years back when they last Yeah, yeah. It was actually a better production, people thought, than the modern. Which was weird, right? Uh, yeah. Right. What's your take on it? <sighs> I mean... I mean, having put technology. 10 albums out, I mean, you've been yeah. down there, right? So we, we've done they it recorded analog, old school, you know, right? and now we do it digital. Um, I think, as long as you know what you're doing, like, the tools are here to, to help us. And, I mean, I love the way that we can record now. You know, where it's easy, just cut and paste, try new things, and it becomes a creative tool. It's you know? <laughs> and, but at the same time, it can be overproduced. It sometimes sounds too good. Everything is just perfect. It's you know, eight auto tune and font size and, and all that stuff. And it, it can kill that feeling if you know don't know what you're doing. So I mean, shitty musicians can sound pretty good, you know, if you're just edited well. Which of course is most frustrating. But I think that the stuff that that. that <laughs> Kind of me a couple years ago was when all the uh, productions, all the albums I heard, they kind of, kind of like having everything at 11 all the time. Like right. the compression was just to the max, everything was equally loud, and there was no dynamics anymore. You know, and I think that's that's the most negative. Like the, that's the, the negative aspect of this because it's so simple and you just want to be louder than everyone. You want it to sound, you know, cracked up to the max, even though it's it's not that loud in your stereo. And I did, I don't like that kind of album. There was some time where, when I, where every other album I heard sounded like that, and it was like, oh man. But I think, like, sound engineers now, I think, do it way better and realize that hey, we should focus on dynamics. And I love. Like Jens Bruegger, who mixed this new album of ours, he, he really gets that. He, he knows how to kind of capture like a, an emotional aspect of, of sounds and melodies and stuff like that. Also, he's like a total hi-fi geek. And he wants everything to sound perfect. And like, it's not just about cracking it up and making it sound cool. That's why we chose him. I love the production. He's a good man. Awesome. Oh, yeah. his stuff. Yeah. yeah. Certain names definitely stick out uh, in the industry, and he's one of them. Mm. Thing that his name's attached to. Him. Yeah. It's but it's dangerous. I think like a lot of uh, producers and mixers and stuff like just compete with what's el what's out there. Oh man, this is super loud. Okay, let's crank it. <laughs> yeah. At, at yeah. some point, it, it's there. There has to be a line that has to be drawn, right? Oh yeah. It's, it's only doing it. And I think that shows, and people, I mean, I think fans are eventually pick up on that, too. And I, I remember hearing, like, I, I talked to some some guy who was producing, and I said, it's like, it doesn't matter, I mean, it just has to sound good in uh, earbuds, because that's how everyone consumes music, and, we, like, <laughs> it has true. to be a good MP3 file. Uh, no, it has to be a good CD, good vinyl, right. good Everything. headphones, or fantastic speakers. You Whatever know, your medium is. That's how I enjoy my music. I, I, oh, I yeah. miss my speakers at home. <laughs> um, one last question, and, and I have to ask this because, uh, again, I've been arguing with different people. Um, a lot of people say the record industry, and we all know that it's definitely changed over the years. Uh, you guys are still on a label. What do you think? Do you think labels have seen their day? Do you think it's not a good thing for new bands to even attempt to get on a label, or that that's going to be a thing in the past? I mean, what exactly do labels do for bands these days that bands can't do on their own? I mean, it's definitely changing, and of course, bands can do things on their own. That you know, but labels do, and I've always had one, so I don't really know how to. I don't <laughs> yeah. know how to deal without it, but. I think what's great about Central Media is that they've kind of kept up with the times and they are still really devoted to 
the album format and the CD and vinyl and, and that kind of stuff, but they also know digital you know, really well and they, they handle that tremendously well. So it's like they're, they are music geeks and record collectors themselves, mm -hmm. so they understand that, that we want that to, we want to put out a, a cool vinyl version, we want to put out a cool CD and special edition, whatever. Yeah. But then also, you know, put it up in Spotify or streaming services and whatnot. And I like to think that record label should still exist because it's a cool thing, you know, you sign the bands and you kind of trust the label, you know, their their kind of music. You just I remember that that's what I did when I grew up. I looked at the the, the sleeve for the uh, for the vinyl record and there was all the other acts that, that right. was on that label and I was like, Well I'm right if there this with album you, is great then that that's, must be good too. And then that's I, how I built my collection. Yeah. <laughs> but for me it was That's noise. how I found out about Dark Train Quit. Alright. For me it was Noise Records we put out Halloween and Black Guardian Run Wild. That's it. that's a creator. So um, so I definitely I would like like for them to exist, but I don't know. Like, bands can Okay. It's fine. I like the variety of options. Thank you so much, man, for the time. Thank you. So looking so forward to tonight's performance. Cool, man. It's gonna be it's awesome. Gonna be fun. And uh, I'm glad you guys made it over. Yeah. It's been the last couple of times I've seen you. Oh yeah. Thanks. Got to get this hang of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's part of the part of the that, that goes with the territory, right? Vegas last night. Oh yeah. Oh.